Hello, I love action research almost as much as this guy. Hello, welcome to chapter two of the Mertler text. This is going to be a little bit uh, shorter chapter. Uh, we went over the overview uh, of on chapter one and we talked about different kinds of models for action research that there are. This is where we're going to focus on the last model of chapter one, which is Mertler's model. So, like I said, you know, when it comes to the kinds of information that are uh, a part of particular approaches, I hope you took a good uh, read of them, a good close read, and, you know, maybe noted some, uh, some areas that maybe you liked, you know, and so, but we're going to take a look at what Mertler has to say at this point. So let's get started. Okay. So going and looking at the Action Research Project, there are four stages involved with it planning, acting, developing, and reflecting. Now, when, uh, and, and this is really, um, it's important to go into it thinking in these terms because you want to have the framework for your inquiry as fleshed out as possible. You won't be able to go and cover every contingency or know what lies around every corner, but have as fully developed a research plan as you can. Okay, that'll just help you out. Remember that this is a cyclical process. It's not linear. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. So going and looking at these different stages, okay, uh, and we're, he approaches this in terms of them being cyclical. Like I said, they're not linear. Um, and to me, that means that as you go through this process, sometimes you will, you know, if you look at this, it looks kind of like you're going around in a wheel here. Okay, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Um, but at a certain point, you may go and actually hop off, you know, at stage four or maybe stage three if you see something that you feel that you need to go and change. That is a concept of qualitative inquiry that is called emergent design. And we'll talk more about that. But let me just summarize it by saying, you know, you're allowed to go and tweak your procedural uh, process as you go along if it fits within the parameters of what you're trying to do. But what this basically says is that as you go through this particular process, as it's illustrated here, when you get to the reflection stage, okay, if you find out something that uh, you want to pursue further, if that's tied to classroom management, pedagogy, whatever the case may be, you, t you uh, basically get off at the reflecting stage and then turn that into another inquiry. Okay? That's sort of the, you know, the emerging part of this. Now, when you've got these four stages, you also have specific steps that go with them. And we'll talk about this more as we go, but we're going to go over it just a little bit here. Okay? The planning stage. This is where we, we go back to what we were talking about, where you don't want to start out being this wide in terms of what you're trying to look at. You want this to be a manageable and uh, small uh, and focused enough area that you can actually investigate within the confines of a semester. Remember, this action research project is your first sojourn into this way of being in the classroom. So I look at this as an intensive practice run that you're actually going to get usable data and conclusions from. But you want to identify a topic and limit it so that it is researchable. Gather the necessary information. Now, if you will look down here on the third bullet, it says reviewing for literature. What you're going to be doing is conducting a literature review as you do your case study. This will come into your case study. It will also come into your culminating research project. The idea behind this is you want to know what has already been done. There are several times where a teacher may want to go and look at a particular a practice or, or perhaps it's a particular grading policy. They can go out and they can look at the, what the research has to say, but they will often find that there are studies out there, but they are strictly quantitative in nature. They don't actually incorporate anything that students or parents or other stakeholders had to say. So, you know, you can use that as a useful reference point. Maybe you'll get something good from that study, but you'll also be able to identify where they, you know, should have changed it a little bit, something different that they should have done. Okay? The acting stage, this is collecting data and analyzing it. The collecting data is probably the most intensive part of this. 
It, it tends to be what takes the longest to do. Analyzing it, whenever you begin this process, there are certain stages that you go through in analyzing it. And we'll talk about this later on in the course. But um, that becomes a process that, that is it, it's almost predictable and it's almost automatic. But you know, look to collecting data to take the longest time. Okay? The developing stage, you're developing an action plan. What is it that you are going to actually be doing with what you have collected? The reflecting stage, you're sharing and communicating the results. Okay. All right, so, and this is, this is an expansion of what we just talked about, but the specific steps within these stages, identify and limit the topic. And I cannot encourage you enough, talk with people. Talk with your peers. Talk with your uh, other students in class. Chat with me about it. Don't say, okay, I've got it. I know what I'm going to do. You should be able to state specifically what you want to do. Communication is a huge help in, a, in this kind of process. Gather your information. Do uh, reviewing of the literature. Conduct the reconnaissance. That is something that's very important. Reviewing the related literature in this area will help you to know um, if you need to keep something in mind that is developmental in nature, if you need to keep something in mind that is more related to the specific approach to collecting data. It will, it will help you to know where others have zigged should you zag. Okay? And then develop an action or a research plan. Okay, and you'll actually do this as a, an assignment in this class. And we'll talk about that in a separate uh, "Watch Me First" video, and um, you know that's that's where we'll get into the research plan that you're going to be developing. So the acting stage, you're implementing this plan, and you're going and collecting data. So. You've gone and conducted the research, you know what it says, you have to go and collect the data uh, through interviews, through observations, things like that. Okay? How are you going to collect this? Now, these are some good uh, ideas right here. What you use will be determined by the nature of your study. I've had numbers of students that have done studies where all they needed was an, a couple of observations and one interview. I've had other students that have said, no, I'm going to need to do an interview, but I'm also going to need to be doing some re uh, survey to uh, find out what people think. I've had people that have surveyed students. I've had people that have surveyed other teachers, parents. You just have to be sensitive to what kind of data collection your particular plan calls for. And then analyzing it. Okay, um, And we'll talk about more of the analysis of data uh, as you go uh, on into your into your uh, project, okay? The developing stage, okay? What are you going to do in terms of it's a change, okay? You've collected the data, you've analyzed it, you think you know what you need to do in order to make the situation better, um, so what are you gonna do? Okay, does this mean you're gonna implement another grading policy that's different? Are you going, I mean, what is it you're going to change about your practice, okay? And then the reflection stage, share what you found, find out what other people think about it, get feedback from them. You know, that is, that is what leads to the greatest degree of, per, of improvement in the teaching profession is just being reflective, uh, trying to be a reflective practitioner, building in those habits and talking with your peers. So this is it for chapter two. And um, be sure to review uh, what we're doing for this particular module with the Watch Me First video. You should have seen that the first time, but make sure you go back so you can uh, ensure that you do all the things that you have to uh, for assignments, etc. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.